I'm half Greek, half Italian. I've been living in the UK for the last decade. Um, really passionate about the community. I'm a BizOps MVP as well, and with a hybrid nature. So my background has always been in CRM operations, uh, whether it's been in marketing, change management, as well as functional consulting. And ultimately, I'm a human evangelist. So the reason I am so active in the community is because I believe in the human impact that we can have through everything that we build in our business solutions. And um, there's so many ways to interact as well. So recently, I've been doing some blogging as well through my blog, Empowered Humans, and the different ways we can learn from each other. But we are here for checklists. And just like Simon Sinek says, um, it's good to start with why. Why are checklists even interesting? So sometimes we have to think about the industry needs and why there's so many different use cases where you need live checklists, where you can see all of your different data together rather than the traditional BPF style. So think, for example, when you're doing um, hygiene inspections in a restaurant or when you are doing uh, retail shop floor inspections or maybe you're a doctor or a nurse and you're doing medical checks and you have your lovely uh, chart that you're going through. At the end of the day, we also, even though we love automation, it might not always be possible. So, you know, thinking realistically, there might be cost limitation, resource limitations, and sometimes human judgment and interventions are needed. So automation is not friendly to that. Of course, the elephant in the room, why don't we do BPFs? I mean, we love them, right? So business process flow sometimes can be complicated if we're thinking of an inception scenario. So if we're doing those Nestle builds, sometimes it can be too complicated to build. And we know stakeholders do love going crazy with their requirements. And finally, the format might be a bit of a challenge as well. In the use cases that I mentioned, you have this very easily digestible um, chart-like format where you want every check to be visible and filled in parallel or in different manual dimensions. So all of these reasons um, are pointing to what can we do in a simpler way rather than just going um, too complicated with this. So here's the use case uh, we are going to delve into the world of the avengers and i'll show you how they've been using um full full-blown power platform solutions and particularly dynamics 365. Um, so here we have Tony and we need to help him prep for battle with the Avengers. They have multiple programs that they are um, using in order to stop threats. Um, so they need us help to build a checklist so they can go through the different checks to prepare them across different dimensions. So what are those dimensions? Uh, we have intelligence prep, planning for battle, making sure the systems are in order, that their equipment is ready, and of course the security is there. Now, this is going to be our process our, as part of a wider business process flow that they are using in their amazing solution called Avenge 365. It's a battle prep management solution where they are able to look at all sorts of cool things that I'll show you in a moment um, and managing anything from um, the Avengers profiles to the protected cities, to the villains, the different um, inhumans that they might be tracking or the monoliths or if you're an Avengers fan, you're going to love this, I promise. Now, we are going to be looking at how the checklist is tracking for every item, whether we've passed or not. So if a pass or fail scenario, um, there is an element of manual comments because we want to say if something has failed, what kind of failure it is and prompt for a second check. And after that, we want to make sure that any action mentioned has been taken care of. So another yes or no there based on the comments added. Remember, we need this easy and flexible. So a very simple ERD format, um, we're going to focus on three tables. And not, that's not the whole solution. This is a specific solution rather than the whole data model. So we have three tables. One is called battle. Um, that is uh, reusing the out-of-the-box opportunity table and then two custom tables one called battle checklist that has a one-to-many relationships between that and the original battle one and that has our actual checklist columns whilst we're also going to use another table called battle checklist template and that will hold this is where the trick starts this will just be a table where we will hold all the rows with our checklist items and the categories that they belong in. We want to automatically generate everything for the user in a beautiful editable subgrid without 
them having to add line by line how we would usually think of a subgrade. So um, generally, we know that being an Avenger is super hard, a lot of stay. However, um, checklists don't have to be hard. We can think of how low-code power can make them simple, configurable, and extendable. And yes, for those geeks that might love the Avengers as much as I do, this is their training center. So I had the opportunity to visit it last weekend in Norwich in the UK. So you can see the similarity between the movie and the reality of where it was shot. So. Um, to summarize, what are we using? We're going to use three tables in the data model. We're going to use um, an editable subgrid, and we're going to do some magic on the ribbon workbench tool from XRM Toolbox to edit some of the commands. Uh, we're going to, as you saw, have a table that holds a template checklist, a power automate flow, and voila, the music, the magic. So. Let's go into the demo, and I appreciate it. we've lost a bit of time, so I'll be short, sweet, and informative. So, can you see my browser now? Yes, we can. Fantastic. So, this is Avengers 65. It's a full end-to-end -end solution for Tony and the rest of the Avengers to prepare for battle and manage anything that has to do um, with their day to day. So this is their homepage. Um, this is a dashboard that each Avenger will have and they can track their open battle programs and how much they're spending on armor or the leads they're getting from the different um, places and sources such as whether it's citizen concerns, field agents from SHIELD and human referrals and so forth, the top uh, battle opportunities, the territories that they've saved this year and so forth. Um, you can see all the different tables that we're tracking on the left. Um, however, we're excited about battles and this is what we're going to be looking at. Here is our view of the open battle programs that we have forecasted for the rest of the year. The Sokovia battle is our main concern. Thanos is being quite threatening there and his army is approaching. So there's a battle coming up next week and we're going to help Tony prep for that. So if we go into that record, you'll see how the BPF looks. And we have four key stages between qualifying threat, developing the battle plan, starting shield action, and eventually stopping the threat. Now we're at the point where we're starting action and to do that, we need to prep and thus go into the battle checklist tab and do that. As a reminder, in terms of creating the template and that template table, it's a very easy thing. You can create your data. Uh, if you want to make it even easier, you can do an Excel upload and then you can think of as many checklist items as you want. It's extendable to the end capacity. But we want to see the automation, right? So let's do that. How do we look at that? Battle checklist tab, we have two key elements here. We have a toggle that says prepare for double for battle. Currently it's a no. The minute I say yes and save my record, I will see the population happen rather than going through the traditional route of the subgrid where I have to click on plus new, add each light item and off we go. So let's do that, click yes, save. Now in the interest of making this quick, I'm gonna do a hard refresh on the record. So we're gonna see it rather than waiting for the slightly asynchronous action to take place. And then you'll see all the different items that we saw from the templated table now appear in the battle check. Now, there we go. The beauty of this is that Tony and the rest of the team can go at any point between checks. So for example, if um, the first check has passed, we can say yes. If the second one is in no, then we say accordingly, add our comments, and when we're ready, we can action. Of course, we cannot finish line item, no problem. But the idea is that we don't want this to become complicated as we go through this quickly, and time is of the essence. The final part, and I apologize for going so quickly, but I don't want to take too much time either, is the flow. So there's three main parts to the flow. The first one is that we're using a trigger for when a row is modified. And this is where we are looking at the main table, um, scope organization in this case, because it's a demo with a global admin role, but by all means, approach it with your security model. 
And we have to filter the row. That's the first important step. We have to make sure that the modifications are for rows where we've just switched the toggle to yes, right? So in this case, because it's a Boolean value, we we'll say it's not equal to false, which is pretty much uh, true and thus yes. The second step is that we're listing all rows. In that case, we are saying, take all of the rows from the battle checklist template table, nice and easy. The third one is an action that we have to pay uh, close attention to. So apply to each, we're taking the values from the template table and we're adding a new row as we go. So for this particular part, we need to map the values between the two tables. To make data hygiene extra happy, um, I have slightly changed the name between the two tables so that it's pretty much the same, but we're not clashing. So area is category, checklist item is item. So we map those two values. Obviously we need to say the table name that they're going in because that's the view that we're using for the subgrid. And then um, let's map obviously the uh, ultimate table that this is all hosted in, in terms of a form and that's the out of the box opportunity table. Interesting thing that I learned as I was going is that you don't need a publisher for out of the box. <laughs> so that's why your flow might look weird otherwise. But otherwise, that's how you save it. And um, you watch the magic happen. The final bit that I did want to say is that um, because we want the grid there we go. We both, because we don't want the grid to have the traditional commands, I went into Ribbon Warbrick from XRM Toolbox and amended that so I don't see the plus new or other things that I didn't want to see. Um, and that means that people, as in users, are focusing on the prepare for battle toggle than getting distracted by the other commands. So that's the final trick to it. Now, we are completely out of time. So I, I do want to thank everyone. If there are any questions, by all means, and otherwise, feel free to reach out on social media uh, or the blog posts. I will be posting everything about the solution as well, so you can see it there. And otherwise, thank you so much for the opportunity.